Who said pawn deals were meant for only average people who could not afford to buy things that are too expensive? The organizers of Pawn Stars, as well as the managers of pawn stores, were left dumbfounded when, before their very eyes, famous actors and other celebrities walked into pawn shops to buy things and even sell their personal stuff. Join us as we delve into moments when famous actors try to sell stuff on Hardcore Pawn. Lex Luger visits the store. If you're a fan of WWE, then you most likely have heard of Lex Luger. For those who may not know him, Lex Luger's actual name is Lawrence Wendell Folan. He is an American retired professional wrestler. He walked into the pawn shop with a man named Michael, and Seth was excited to see him. While growing up, he had been a huge fan of wrestling, which explained his excitement. Even Les was surprised that the renowned Lex Luger had appeared at his store. He was immediately ready to do business with him without even knowing what he had come to do. It turned out that Lex Luger had remembered the society that groomed him. He had come to sell something to Lex to raise money for charity, particularly for a non-governmental organization called the World Wrestling Outreach. He had brought a jacket from his stash with his name printed on it. He wore it, possibly a lot in his heydays, so it must be worth something. The already excited Les immediately moved forward to try out the jacket, while joking that Luger was smaller than him. The jacket was very special to Luger, and ordinarily, he wouldn't have tried to sell it if the situation did not demand so. But he needed the money for donation, so Les and Seth wanted to contribute to the cause. For the sake of collection, and because Les wanted to own the jacket, he offered to pay $2,500. Luger had to think for a while. Michael wouldn't interfere because this was something about Luger's history. Les increased the offer to $3,000. You could see that he wanted to own the piece, and it's easy to see why. Luger is a two-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion and a one-time WWA World Heavyweight Champion. He is also a five-time NWA WCW United States Heavyweight Champion, holding the records for consecutive and total days as champion. He is the second WCW Triple Crown Champion. So, yeah, he's a champion in many senses of the word, so it was understandable that Les didn't want to let go of the jacket. Luger proposes selling it for $3,500, and Les doesn't hesitate to agree. According to him, since it was for a charitable cause, he was willing to pay that much. You would wonder why a wrestling champion walked with a crutch, or maybe it's not surprising. Luger suffered a nerve impingement in his neck on October 19, 2007, which led to temporary paralysis. In an unconfirmed report, it was stated that he underwent an intravenous antibiotic treatment and was expected to make a full recovery, though that was never an official prognosis. Nearly a month after his spinal stroke, Luger was still in a quadriplegic state, having no movement in either his arms or legs. In June 2008, Luger was said to be able to stand on his own for short periods and walk using a walker. In 2010, Luger stated in an interview that he was able to walk more comfortably and was now able to drive. By 2014, Luger was using a wheelchair regularly, though he was still able to walk short distances, and by 2021, he had become completely reliant on a wheelchair for mobility. Kane Hodder Famous actors are known wherever they go, and Kane Hodder is no exception. He strolled into the shop and headed straight for Seth, who was pleased to have him. According to him, he was in the city for the Motor City Nightmare Convention. Yeah, it's creepy, as he is known for acting in creepy movie roles. Hodder is best known for playing Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th franchise, a horror movie. He is also known for his role as Victor Crowley in the Hatchet series, another horror. Also, he played Leatherface during the stunts of Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yet another horror film. Kane was in the shop because he wanted to transform a seemingly gold item into something more valuable, maybe more gold, to use for a charity event. After examining the object that Kane brought in, Seth immediately discovered it wasn't gold, but he was still willing to make something out of it for Kane. 
The only problem was that since a whole new piece of jewelry needed to be made, the process could have been more strenuous, and the casting and molding would have taken time. Delivery would have taken about five days. And five days was what Kane didn't have. The program he came for was starting in two days, so he had about a day and a half to go. Perhaps Seth thought that doing something like that for a famous actor was a great way to publicize their jewelry-making ability and that it would announce them to the world, so Seth decided to undertake the task. He decided to go all out and get it done for Kane. Ice hockey star, McCarthy. A customer walked into the shop, hoping to sell some jerseys that were once worn by some players on the ice hockey team known as the Detroit Red Wings. He showed Seth and Les the names written on the jerseys to show their authenticity. The Detroit Red Wings, often referred to as The Wings, are a professional ice hockey team based in Detroit. The Red Wings compete as a member of the Atlantic Division in the National Hockey League in the Eastern Conference. They are one of the original six teams in the league. The team is pretty famous in the U.S., so it made sense that Steve wanted to sell some jerseys the team members wore for some quick cash. When Les asked him how much he wanted for the jerseys, he proposed to sell them for $300. Why did they proceed to haggle on the price? The customer needed clarification about what happened next. It was unexpected for him when someone walked up to Les and Seth. He looked like an employee from how he dressed. The person was indeed working for Les at the shop. However, the person wasn't your regular employee. He was a former player for the Detroit Red Wings, Darren McCarthy. He is a former Canadian professional ice hockey player best known for his years playing with the Detroit Red Wings of the National Hockey League. McCarthy has been known for taking on the role of the Red Wings enforcer most of his career. And in this role, he won the Stanley Cup four times. But is he only famous for ice hockey? Nope. McCarty occasionally appears and wrestles for pro wrestling company ICW No Holds Barred. He was brought into a feud with wrestlers like Brandon Kirk and Casey Kirk. On March 24, 2023, he appeared as a guest at Impact Wrestling's monthly special sacrifice. Being confronted by Bully Ray led to a fight in the ring between the two. McCarthy is famous as a former ice hockey player and in the wrestling world. Darren McCarthy came to help with the negotiation, and the customer recognized him immediately. With McCarthy, an ex-member of the Detroit Red Wings, in the picture, Les tried to start the negotiation from the top. The customer said he wanted $250 for the jersey, but McCarthy poured a bucket of cold water on him, saying that something like that would sell online for $80. Although McCarthy's offer sounded ridiculous to Les and Seth, they simply decided to leave it all to him because he was in a better position to judge the value of the jerseys. Surprisingly, the customer had no problems with it, probably because he met a former ice hockey star, but he immediately agreed. Nice meeting you, man. Nice meeting you. All right. Yeah. Maserati, Rick Jr. Les was alone at the counter when a certain customer bounced in. What's going on, man? All right, man hoping to sell an exquisite and expensive-looking item made from gold, encrusted with diamonds. Got a little piece, man. Had it for a couple years, man. Nah, nah. Trying to get rid of it, man, you know. According to the customer, he wanted to sell it to eliminate it, as he had been with it for some years. The customer himself is a celebrity. Despite growing up without a father figure, he was determined to break free from his family's troubled history and make a name for himself. Therefore, he decided to pursue a career in the entertainment industry and became a rapper, adopting Maserati Rick Jr. The customer proceeded to reveal a fact that left Les gaping. Not only was he a celebrity, but he was the son of a notorious Detroit drug lord, Rick Maserati. Having learned the history of the item before him, Les was understandably more interested and immediately asked how much Rick Jr. wanted to sell it for. I broke the cycle already. Wow. So, how much did you want for it? Rick Jr. wanted to sell the piece for $7,000, but was still willing to negotiate. You know, it's worth about $7,000 or whatever. So, you know. As brutal as always, Les proposed buying it for $1,000. Man, you know. fine. Thousand bucks. Surprising Rick Jr. with his offer. But after thinking hard, 
he still increased it to $2,500. I'll give you $2,500. Which Rick agreed to. Sonny Barry. A man walked into the shop straight up to Les and Ashley at the counter. He said he had a pen holder, which they might like, but he pulled out a pen holder from his bag instead of a pen holder. Les and Ashley must have wondered how a wench had anything to do with a pen holder. Was the man going to magically turn the iron wrench into a pen holder? Who was this man? Sonny Barry is a professional strongman known for his amazing field of strength. It might be your first time hearing about such a sport. The world is not short of sports. Many people would do anything to keep them fit, and being a professional strongman is one of those things. Strongman is a weightlifting-based sport where the athletes compete in several events involving different aspects of mental and physical strength, speed, and endurance. They do things that make them go beyond the limits of a regular person. You don't want to be hit by a strong man. Well, now Sonny Barry wanted to bend the tool into a pen holder. Les and Ashley looked on in amazement as he slowly but surely bent the wrench into his desired form. You could see the doubt on Ashley's face. It was obvious that she didn't think he could do it. But after all the huffing and puffing, Sonny presented the final product, an awesome pen holder. He even tested it out with Les's pen. It was obvious that he would sell his wrench-turned pen holder, so while he was at it, why not sell some more? Sonny pulled out a horseshoe from his bag to showcase his superhuman strength further. Les picked it up and immediately wanted to play sports. However, Sonny was there to play a different sport. He was there to showcase his talents as a professional strongman, so instead of throwing the horseshoe like every other person, he wanted to twist it into something and you would not believe what shape he desired to transform the horseshoe into. A heart shape. The shape of a heart is simply the opposite of the shape of a horseshoe. But Sonny had no qualms about proceeding with the bending. Les and Ashley wanted to authenticate the horseshoe, and after pulling at it, they confirmed it, so Sonny got down to business. The huff and puff this time was considerably more than the first time, which was understandable. Sonny finally bent the horseshoe into the shape of a heart, Stunned by the awesome performance he witnessed, Les expressed his desire to buy the items and ended up paying $25 for them. We've seen celebrities selling things on Hardcore Pawn, but some also come in to buy things, like the one who bought half the items in a shop, Dana White. It seems we're not done with fighting yet, as we're faced with another known face in fight sports. Dana White is an American businessman who is the CEO and president of the world-renowned mixed martial arts organization, the UFC. He is also the owner of Power Slap, a slap fighting promotion. He came into the pawn store with one goal in mind, to increase his weapon collection. Unsurprisingly, the man is a weapon collector, since he is widely known to be involved with fighting sports. The weapons he was interested in were swords, so Rick had a sword he gave to Japanese Mike Yamasaki to refurbish. The refurbished sword was a samurai sword, which dates back to the 1600s. Rick decided that the sword would not be for sale. Instead, he would keep it in a display case to better admire it. But it didn't cross Rick's mind that Dana White, a combat sport and rare weapon enthusiast, would find his way to the store and meet Chumley. The sword expert, Mike Yamasaki, estimated the samurai sword which Rick had waited two years to have refurbished, to be worth about $35,000 to $40,000. Chumley overheard Dana White talking about how he wanted to add to his sword collection. He immediately started bragging about having a samurai sword that could be traced back to its original family centuries ago. Watching all that, Corey asked which sword Chumley was talking about, and he responded that it was the same one Rick had said not to sell. This only intrigued Dana even more, as a sword from the 1600s that took work to purchase was interesting. Chumley told him the sword was worth $40,000, but Dana White offered to pay $30,000 and buy every sword that Chumley had previously shown him. Chumley accepted the deal. But didn't we mention that the sword was not for sale? Rick came out grumbling about having to wait for years to have the sword refurbished, only for Dana White to buy it up so he tried to strike a deal with him over another sword he just bought. The sword was priced at 
because it belonged to a Japanese warlord during the Civil War. Dana White bought it for $9,000 as a discount since he had already purchased almost half the swords in the place. Not only actors or wrestlers have graced the Pawn Stars show, but different celebrities have shown up on Pawn Stars time and again, neither to buy nor sell, but they were there regardless. Let's briefly look at some celebrities who graced the show with their presence. Phil Collin. Have you ever heard of Def Leppard? It's a famous English rock band. Phil Collin is an English musician best known as the co-lead guitarist for this rock band since joining the band in 1982 while recording the Pyromania album. A blonde lady entered the store with a guitar painted and played by Phil Collin. She wanted $10,000. Rick had to verify the guitar's authenticity, so he called an expert to identify it. However, this expert was someone that the customer did not expect to see. Her jaws hung as a group walked into the store towards them. When she turned around to see who Rick had called in, she was dumbfounded seeing that the expert was Def Leppard. Phil Collin immediately recognized the guitar with a single glance. He remembered the guitar being among the first 10 he made as he practiced his painting technique. Wanting to test the guitar, Phil Collin started playing it directly in the middle of the shop. He confirmed that the guitar plays beautifully and can be played as beautifully as displayed as a work of art. Rick offered $8,000 for the guitar, but he ended up settling with the customer for $8,500. Dennis Quaid A customer entered the store with a movie poster featuring Dennis Quaid as President Ronald Reagan. Rick commented that the actor, Quaid, looked like the president, and the movie should be out soon. Rick asked if the autograph on the poster was authentic, and Roberts, the seller, confirmed that it was. Roberts wanted to sell the poster for $350, but Rick would only pay after first confirming if the autograph was genuine, so he called someone in to verify, except it wasn't a regular someone. It was Dennis Quaid himself. Roberts was rooted to the ground, flustered. Quaid confirmed that he had signed the poster for the producer, who sold it to Roberts. Rick asked Quaid again to confirm whether that was his signature on the poster, and Quaid confirmed that the illegible script was his. Rick offered to pay Roberts $100 for it, but Roberts said it was worth more than that, since Dennis Quaid personally signed it. They eventually settled for $200. Stan Lee. This name is quite famous among comic lovers worldwide, especially fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A customer named Vince walked up to Chumley in the store with a 1977 Spider-Man comic book by John Romita, signed by both John Romita and Stan Lee. Chumley explained how Spider-Man is synonymous with Stan Lee, and that Spider-Man was perhaps his second created character. Chumley, being a Marvel enthusiast, already knew how he intended to verify the authenticity of the comic strip, as Stan Lee was in Vegas at that time, doing a meet and greet for the new Avengers exhibit. According to Vince, when he bought the original artwork from Ramita, he had him sign it. And since he was the only one who owned such an original piece of comic strip, it was estimated to be worth $8,000, $10,000. Since Stan Lee was in town, Chumley decided to visit him together with Vince, and that's how the famous Stan Lee made his appearance on Pawn Stars. While they waited in line to see Stan Lee, they haggled over the price of the strip. Meeting Stan Lee, the man enthusiastically confirmed the comic strip and said it brought back pleasant memories. He also confirmed his signature and that of Ramita on the strip. Chumley and Vince then agreed on a price of $5,000. Mick Foley. A customer came into the shop bringing a vintage WWE Dude Love t-shirt and a Mankind mask signed by Mick Foley. The seller, Scott, hoped to get $300 for the shirt and $200 for the signed mask. However, Rick needed clarification about how to appraise the items and determine their value, if they were valuable. But Chumley had been with him for many years, and he knew just how much of a wrestling freak Chumley was. Chumley was a big fan of WWE, and he proved that when he was called upon. He immediately clarified that Dude Love and Mankind are the same person, a professional wrestler named Mick Foley. 
Chumley even proceeded to give a rundown of Mick Foley's career. He is an American retired professional wrestler signed to WWE under the company's program, known as Legends acting as a company ambassador. Foley is a four-time world champion, an 11-time world tag team champion, a one-time TNA Legends champion, and the inaugural WWF Hardcore Champion. His Hell in a Cell match against The Undertaker is widely regarded as one of his most memorable and controversial matches and is acknowledged as the greatest Hell in a Cell match of all time. On how to verify the items, Chumley decided it was easier to call in the famous Mick Foley to identify them by authenticating his signatures. The customer was immediately shocked upon hearing that Mick Foley was coming. He was even more amazed when he saw him in person. According to Foley, the mask was sold as a Halloween costume. He inspected it and confirmed that it was indeed his signature, although he had no idea its worth. Even though many people have tried to make counterfeit t-shirts over the years, Foley was still able to identify this particular t-shirt and confirm it to be original. He said the t-shirt was from a limited run and the unique tie-dye confirmed the authenticity. Rick and Chum made an offer of $200 for both items. This could have gone better with the customer, who requested an increased purchase price. After a while, he simply said that meeting Mick Foley justified his keeping his memorabilia. Apparently, after verifying the genuineness of the items, he no longer intended to sell them. He simply took his merchandise home. What does it feel like when a famous actor walks into your store and turns the way of negotiating upside down? Steve Carell's Weird Negotiation Rick, as usual, was at the counter, attending to customers as they came, when one man in particular walked up to him. The man greatly looked like Steve Carell, and when Rick asked him about it, he simply said he wasn't who he had been mistaken to be. Only when Rick made a joke that he couldn't be Steve Carell because he imagined the actor would be much shorter did the customer angrily confirm that he was Steve Carell. Carell entered the shop, interested in World War II divers' knives that he admired through the glass case in front of Rick. Rick told him that the knife was worth $20,500. Carell examined the knife, and that's when the very weird negotiation began. Ordinarily, when the seller names a price, the buyer tries to beat down the price to the most affordable for him, but in this case, the price just went higher. Rick offered to sell for $2,500, and Carell countered by offering to pay $4,000, which is $1,500 more than the asking price. Seeing how the event unfolded, Rick raised the price to $5,000. Carell once again moved it up another notch to $6,000. But after putting Rick through all that, Carell revealed his actual intention. He had not come to purchase the diver's knife. He didn't come to purchase anything at all. He said that he was a collector, loved looking around the pawn shops, and would return the next day to spend hours wandering around the shop. It was no small shock for customers and employees alike when these famous faces walked into pawn shops to buy and sell. The actions of Dana White were particularly surprising. You want to know what other thing is surprising? the toughness and resilience of our phone cases capable of protecting you phone from external and internal damage. The cases are out for sale. You don't want to miss this chance. Grab yours by clicking on your screen or clicking on the first link in the description. What are your thoughts about these famous actors and other celebrities showing up on Pawn Stars? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.